All right, guys. Well, I have uh, I'm almost done with this Honda unit here, and uh, the purpose of this video is to show you guys how to test the solenoids. And I got here a 13 volt power supply. Uh, it's at 3.5 amps. Uh, if you have a higher amperage, it's better. I mean, for uh, some uh, lower uh, resistance solenoids. And what we're going to do here, we're going to do basically uh, ohms law, voltage divided by uh, ohms equals amps, and uh, in order for uh, to determine if a solenoid is in good condition, we need to see what's the current flow that go that flows through it. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, check my uh, my power supply here. So I got I got it on volts, and I'll check my power supply to see how much voltage do we have, and we'll write that down. So move this solenoid here out of the way. Okay, so we got 13.8 volts. We're going to use a calculator to calculate. Uh, so we got 13.84. Okay, so now we're going to test uh, the resistance of uh, the one with the yellow wire, the solenoid with the yellow wire. So we're going to go to ohms. So we got our volts. Now we're going to have to divide it by our ohms. And we're going to uh, I have to calibrate my meter. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so it's zeroed out. Okay, now this is a power uh, supply and, and the body grounded solenoid. So I put my ground on the body, you know, get good ground. Let me change my test lead so I can uh, get in there. So I'm checking the yellow wire. And we got 11.4 ohms, 11.35 ohms, and this is going to be kind of an average, 11.35. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down. 11.35 ohms, and then it's going to give us the uh, the current flow that we should get. So we got 13. Point 84 divided by 11.35. We need to have 1.21 amperage flowing through it. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do here now, we're going to use the meter as a jumper and we're going to measure the amperage flowing through it. I'm going to change my test lead to the amps socket here. And I'm going to use the ground to my ground here. Make sure it's properly kind of a little bit loose, but here we go. So we're using our meter as our ground. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, click the uh, solenoid. And we'll see how, many, how much amperage do we have. We should have 1.21 amperage. We have 0 0.91, which is very close to 1 amp. And it's clicking, you know, very good. So uh, this solenoid here with the yellow wire is considered good. Now let's go ahead and do, do the the one for the green wire, and it's a little bit different uh, ohm reading, but let's go ahead and check them out. Okay, so we do. We already know the power source, 13.84. Now we're going to check the resistance on the other uh, solenoid here. I'm going to give my uh, test lead. Change it. Change my test lead, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna check the one with the green wire. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and calibrate again. It's asking me to calibrate. So every time, that's 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 the issue with the snap-on, you know. That, but it's for accuracy. So let's go ahead and uh, calibrate our test leads. Okay, it doesn't appear. Let me move my uh, test lead to channel one. Okay, it's calibrating. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, check our resistance on the green wire. Fourteen point six eight. So we got fourteen point six eight on the second solenoid, and our power supply is thirteen point eight four. Let's go ahead and do the math on that. 
a 4 divided by 14.68 ohms and we should have 0.94 ohms in persistence and that's exactly what we had on the other one so let's go ahead and uh, uh, go to amps internal and we're going to use our meter as a jumper so we got Let's go ahead and change it to our amperage. And we check our green wire now. 0 0.91. This is, uh, came out actually perfectly. It's giving me a negative reading because the negative I have it on the body of the, of the solenoid and the positive I have it to my uh, ground supply. But that's all right. I mean, we, we got the same. I and mean, we can switch it around, put our negative going first through inside the meter and then the current flowing outside the meter to my solenoid and 0 0.93 it's almost the same 91, 92, 84, I mean if you see a lot of difference in, uh, in value like let's say uh, you go to a complete short or you have 10 ohm, I mean uh, 10 amps or maybe 9 amps, I mean, you're going to, uh, I mean, it's considered bad solenoid. Okay, so we determined that this solenoid, it's in good shape. Now let's go ahead and uh, do the same with this other one, and we're going to end it there. Okay, so we check our resistance on this other solenoid. So let's go ahead and change our test lead to uh, regular channel 1. Let's go to ohms. Let's calibrate our test leads. I could use, I could press N and use the previous calibration, but I'd rather just uh, be more accurate and do it this way. Okay. So let me check, uh, change my leads here. And yeah, you have to change leads. It's actually uh, a little bit more fun when you're doing it on the car. You get your wiring diagram. And 15.33, uh, okay, we got 15.33 ohms, and we got 13.84 volts divided by that, and we're going to have our amps, okay. So let's go ahead and do this again. This is going to be a little bit more difficult because the connector, the, the pins are inside. Okay, so we got our ground. We change our test lead to our amps. Now let's go to amps internal. And this is going to be fun. So we should have, uh, let's go ahead and do the math. Is uh, 13.84 divided by 15.33, approximately 0 0.90. 0 0.90. I'm sure you're here on the calculator. So what we're looking at, 0 0.90. All right. This is going to be a little tricky. So uh, here we go. We're showing on the meter 0 0.1 amps. Now we get one end of the test lead in one prong and our power supply on the other one. We got 0 0.88. 0 0.88, this one right is considered good. I'm going to do the rest for the linears and this other solenoid. And uh, that should be solenoid testing. You can do this on the car, you can do this out of the car. And this is how I determine, you know, uh, if my solenoids are good to go back on the transmission or if I should replace them. Uh, I'm going to do a controlled uh, uh, corrosion test and uh, show you uh, the difference when you have corrosion in the wire or if you have uh, high resistance in the solenoid. For this test, I'm going to use my test light. We're going to use it as corrosion. We are in series here. 
On my uh, solenoid, remember we're using the meter, the ground circuit for my meter, and then my, my power supply is our regular power going to my solenoid. So uh, we had 11.35 on one and 14.68 on the other one. And we had a 1.21 uh, current flow on one of the solenoids, which was the, uh, the yellow one, and uh, 0 0.94 on the, on the green one. We're going to just compare both and see what's the difference in the amperage reading. Let me just make sure there's no glare on that screen. Okay. Let me get you a little bit closer here. All right. Okay, so here I have the solenoid. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, click. We're going to do the green wire first. And as you can see here, my test light is lighting up. So current, it is flowing through the solenoid. And if you see here, there is no, not a lot of change. We're supposed to be at 0 0.94 and we are at 0 0.06. Now let's go ahead and do the other solenoid. And we have uh, the same 0 0.06. And we see that our test light is lighting up. Okay. So uh, there we have it for this test. High corrosion can cause uh, not enough current flow going through uh, your solenoid and your solenoid might not be operational. Or the resistance inside you could have a partially open solenoid you know the windings and uh, that's that's how you test them okay so now we are going to uh, test this solenoid here and this is a linear solenoid it has uh, the electrical part here and then we have a uh, valve with the spring and it has tension on it okay so uh, let's go ahead and start with this all over again let me go ahead and change my test lead to uh, ohms reading here and we'll check the resistance of the solenoid and write it down. Okay, so we got, let me go to uh, ohms. Let's go ahead and calibrate our leads. Okay, we are at zero ohms. Let's go ahead and uh, check our resistance here. I have a connector here, so uh, make it easier, so much easier. Okay, so we got, 5.33 ohms. Let's go ahead and uh, put our power supply 13.84. Write it down. That's our volts. And amperage. Let's see what we're going to have for amperage. Okay. So we're going to run it in series. I'm going to get my uh, negative lead on my negative wire. I'm going to get either one of these two leads everything's moving around okay now we're going to change change it to amperage Let's go ahead and exit the screen and amps internal okay so we got 0 0.001 amps and I am disconnected so 13.84 volts on 5.33 uh, ohms, how much do we have here? 2.44, that's our 2.4, 2.33. Okay, you just heard it click. It's an operational solenoid, it's clicking. Okay, so now let's do the math. Let's see if this uh, solenoid is in good condition. So we have 13.84 divided by 5.33 ohms equals 2.59. 2.59, 2.33, it started almost there and then it started uh, dropping a little bit. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to see if I can uh, bind this solenoid here so it will keep it from moving to see if the resistance, the mechanical resistance will affect the uh, electrical part of it. All right, be right back. Okay, we are back. 
we are back with the same solenoid and what I have here I uh, on the adjustment I went almost all the way out and uh, we're going to check the uh, current flow and see what's it, what's it going to be without a lot of resistance 2.32 and we were at 2.33 2.29 2.26, 2.25. Okay, let's let's put 2.25. Now let's go all the way in. It's not going to affect at all. I mean, a, a lot, but it is going to affect some. So I'm going in on the adjustment on the solenoid, and even though I I go all the way down here, I I, I still see the valve move when I click it because I don't have enough uh, threads going all the way down. Okay, so now we're going to do the same. So we were at 2.25. Now we have a mechanical restriction with transmission fluid pressure going through uh, through this valve. It would affect a little more. So uh, this is a partially stuck valve on the solenoid that we have created right now. So let's go ahead and check our resist our uh, current flow. 2.33, 2.31, 2.39. To six, it's almost the same thing. I mean, it's not affecting uh, much at all. We have the same amount of current flow. Okay, so uh, it looks like the mechanical restriction will not affect uh, as much as uh, an electrical issue. So here we go. We have our solar noise tested. Uh, you do the math. Uh, Voltage divided by ohms equals amps, and if you do the math and it's, if it's real close to what you should have, the amperage reading, your solenoid is considered in good condition. All right, well, I, I hope that this has helped you guys, and I know it's even better when you do this type of testing on the car, when the solenoids are inside the transmission, on this transmission there on the outside, I mean, it's no big deal. You can take them off and, and uh, test them. But when you have them going through the wiring harness, through the case connector, the solenoids are inside. You have to tear it, up, tear it apart, you know, to get to it, to check them. I mean, you can just check it at the, tra at the uh, PCM connector. And, I mean, you do your, you do your math, voltage divided by ohms equals amps. Do the math, you do the testing. If it checks out all right, it's good. No further testing is required. If the math, if you do the math and it doesn't match what the results are, or stupid, then the uh, shift solar is bad. And then if it goes to it, tear it apart, or do it like that. All right, guys, uh, if it's a higher, you can click your like and subscribe. And uh, I'll upload more videos. Thanks for watching.